Lindsay Woodford here, a lecturer on the Sport and Exercise Psychology MSc at UE Bristol. Today's reflection is on sports psychology in dance. Now, the reason this reflection has come about is based on a conversation I had with my husband a few nights ago, who came home from the pub where he was playing in his local darts league, saying that one of his mates needed my help. Okay, so my initial reaction was to laugh, and lots of ideas were in my head about um, these issues that this mate of his at the pub might have. Anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, this mate of his turned out to be a former world champion darts player. Okay, he got my attention at this point, and we started to talk a bit about this um, player and the particular challenges that he was having. So I started thinking about the type of work as a sport and exercise psychologist practitioner I might do with a darts player. So I've never worked in darts before, to be quite honest I've never really watched it either. So um, I set about find, doing a little bit of homework. So four key areas of homework for me. Number one, fully immerse myself in the world of darts. So, what is it about darts that people love? Um, what is it that the players love? What are the challenges? What are the nuances? What makes darts um, such a popular sport? Number two, role models. So I started looking at the most successful darts players of all time, and undoubtedly this piece of homework couldn't be done without uh, considering Phil the power. Taylor, I'm the most successful darts player of all time. So what is it that makes him so successful? At number three, what are the main challenges of a darts player? So in my research and talking to darts players, um, I discovered that this was based around being able to perform a really minute, tiny, fine motor skill under immense pressure. So what is this pressure? The pressure um, could be the audience. Um, if any of you have been to a darts match, watched a darts match, um, the audience are so much fun and um, full of energy, lots of banter, very enthusiastic. There's lights, there's music, there's beautiful women, um, there's beer. It's a very exciting, big occasion just to be there as a spectator. So one can only imagine the pressure that these darts players are under when they're trying to perform these really fine motor skills with all of this background noise going on. Um, you can assume that if it's televised that there's probably a lot of money involved as well, so there's that financial pressure. Not to mention um, the pressure of it being televised, hence thousands or possibly millions of people all around the world watching you play. So point number four interventions. What kind of interventions um, might be useful to help a darts player improve his game? So the particular darts player in question um, that I'm um, hoping to work with, his main issue is that he plays brilliantly until the TV cameras are on. So how can he um, maintain that consistent performance so that he can perform to his best in any situation? So there were um, three three main things that um, I thought would be um, worth considering with this particular player. So number one would be relaxation. So in this high pressure environment you need to perform when there's so much else going on around you, you need to be able to relax, be calm, just focus on that board. So cutting out all the noise of the audience, what your opponent is doing, whether you're winning or losing, focus on the task in hand, playing that board. So um, this brings me on to point number two, um, would be some visualisation training. So um, getting into a nice relaxed state and visualising, just playing your game. Imagine you're standing there on the hockey, you're trying to hit that vital last double to win the match. You're feeling calm, you're saying positive things to yourself. Um, and then hopefully when you're then in that match situation again, that's the place you'll be able to go back to because you've rehearsed it and you feel a lot more confident in that situation. Which brings me on to point number three, which is self-talk. What is going on in your head in those crucial moments when the camera is on you, the spotlight's on you, 
people in the audience are shouting at you, um, the music is blaring and there's lots of Phil, Phil, Phil chants going on in the background. You need to be saying positive things to yourself. You need to be your number one coach, your number one fan. You can do this. You can keep your head in the game and you can be the world's best players. Just a few ideas of um, some of the work that I might do with a darts player. Um, I hope you found this useful, interesting, and I shall keep you posted on um, the work that hopefully I shall be doing very soon. And if you have any comments, questions, please um, post them down below on the comment bit. Um, okay, thank you very much for listening. Bye!